In this video, we will be discussing how the enthalpies of reaction can be determined based on the bond energies. We will be relating potential energy with bond making and breaking, defining bond enthalpy, estimating reaction enthalpy based on comparing bond energies, or by comparing the enthalpies of formation, which will actually be covered more in depth in the next video. And then we'll remember what endothermic versus exothermic means, and define those based on the reaction enthalpies. Chemical reactions are a series of bonds being broken and formed. When each of these are formed or broken, energy is released or used. For instance, if we break the double bond in oxygen, 498 kilojoules of energy is used for every mole that is broken. This is called the bond energy. By looking at the bond energy of all the bonds broken and formed, we can find an estimation of the enthalpy of reactions. Now let's look at a chemical reaction. Remember that the energy in a chemical reaction comes from the bonds that are being broken and formed. If we have a reaction such as this, where two carbon monoxides are reacting with oxygen to form two carbon dioxides, we can look at all the bonds broken and all the bonds form to approximate the enthalpy of reaction. Before we get into the actual nuts and bolts of the calculations, let's just look at what bonds are being broken and what bonds are being formed. Here we are breaking an OO double bond and forming two CO double bonds. Notice though that it isn't quite as simple as saying just these bonds are broken and formed since we also must delve into the situation of the triple bond and the CO being changed into a double bond. There's several different ways of calc calculating enthalpy that are based on these concepts of bond enthalpy. Now let's talk about each of these now. First, we're gonna do a quick overview of all of the ways of going through and calculating the reaction enthalpy. There's three ways and we'll walk through each. We can talk only about the bonds being broken and formed. We'll call this method one. Of course, we can run into issues where if we're only talking about which bonds are being broken and which bonds are being formed, it's hard to talk about something like a triple bond being turned into a double bond. So an easier way to handle this sometimes is to compare all of the bonds of the reactants and all of the bonds of the products. This is still gonna be an estimation, but it's often a better estimation and often it's just simpler. Lastly, we can calculate it using the enthalpy of formation of the products in the reactants. We haven't talked about the enthalpy of formation yet. We're gonna be covering this in the next video. In each of these cases, the value you'd be using are looked up in a table or they're gonna be given. They're not something that you'd ever need to memorize. Now let's do a few examples. First, let's start with method one. And we're gonna do the exact same chemical reaction for both method one and method two. We're gonna start with method one. Here we only talk about the bonds that are being broken versus the bonds that are being formed. Energy is needed to break bonds. This means that it's a positive value. You're putting energy into the system. When bonds are formed, energy is released, and so its value is negative. Here we have an example where methane is reacted with chlorine. We form CH3Cl and H3, HCl from this reaction. Now notice I also gave you a table. These have all the values that you might need to solve this problem. Take a moment and pause before moving on and figure out what bonds are broken and which ones are formed. You don't even have to worry about doing the math yet, just see if you can get which bonds are broken and which bonds are formed. We have one CH bond and one CL bond that are broken. And then we form one CCL bond and we also form one HCl bond. We can take the values from the table and use the equation to solve for this. So here we have bonds broken being a positive value because you are putting energy in. We have bonds formed being a negative value because you are releasing energy. When we do this, we get the following values. We fill in the values for the bond broken for 414 and 243. We fill in the bonds, the values for the bonds formed, which is a negative 339 and a negative 431. Notice we had to make those negative. The table is always gonna list them as positive. Now it's just a matter of doing the math and we get a negative 113 kilojoules per mole. And this is our answer.
Now let's move on to the next way of doing this, which is to count up all of the bonds in the reactants and all of the bonds in the products. We treat this problem as if every single bond in the reactant is broken up and then all of the bonds in the products are formed. At that point, we do it identically to method one. This can be a bit more complex in terms of the number of buttons you must press on a calculator, but is generally much easier and much more mindless to do. Here, we're going to add up all four of the bonds in CH4 and the one CLCL bond. From here, we can then subtract out the three CH bonds, the CCL bond, and the HCL bond. You'll do this the exact same way that we did for the previous method and do bonds broken minus bonds formed, or if you prefer to think of it, bonds broken plus the negative of the bonds formed. From here, we end up with our same answer as before, which is a negative 113 kilojoules per mole. Now there is one other way to do this. So method three is very similar. However, instead of looking up the bond enthalpies, you're actually gonna look up the enthalpies of formation for each species and then do products minus reactants. I'm gonna skip the example for one because we're gonna be doing this in the next video and expanding on it a bit, actually defining enthalpy of formation first and then taking a more in-depth look before doing the example. So as a quick review, chemical reactions involve making and breaking bonds. This creates the reaction energy that comes from the bonds that are being broken and the bonds that are being formed. The energy that's needed to make one mole of a bond in a compound is called the bond energy. You can calculate the delta H of reaction in three different ways. First, by comparing just the bonds broken and formed. Second, by comparing all of the bonds in the products to all of the bonds in the reactants. And then lastly, the one that we'll be covering in the next video, is to look at the enthalpies of formation.